Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining why demand and supply zones fail. And it's a question that I get asked a lot. Why did this zone not work out? Why, how to know when a zone is going to turn? And I've got news for you. Nobody knows when a zone is going to turn or which zone is going to fail. Trading is a probabilities game. All we're doing is we're trying to understand the likelihood of one thing happening over another. If anybody tells you that this is this zone or this level is going to work, then you should reply to them and say, well, if you know that this zone is going to work, then why don't you bet everything you have on it? Because if they know, that indicates what? Certainty. And if you're certain that something is going to happen, then why not bet everything you have on that one trade and just become a billionaire, millionaire, 100 times, 100 times over? Traders won't do it. Right, because they understand that nobody can predict the future and it's a probabilities game. So why even try to figure out when this zone is going to turn? It's just understanding the likelihood of one thing happening over another. That's all we're doing. So let me get into why zones fell specifically from my, uh, from my knowledge. So why zones fell? first things first what you need to do is really kind of understand um supply and demand zones that they are potential bargain uh cheap or bargain prices yeah so you know rally based drop drop based rally I, i'm not an advocate of that narrative because it doesn't really tell you anything in regards to um value and understanding buying low and selling high yeah, and if you want to watch uh, my YouTube video on why supply and demand is the genesis of all trading, technical trading strategies, um, the link is in the description box below. And this also, I think I'll probably have it in one of the uh, a link on the top right hand side. And that really explains it. But from a really kind of quick, um, uh, uh, I guess, example is we're looking at the higher, higher, higher low principle. If prices, this is a price chart. Yeah, this is zero and let's say for example that's 10 yeah there is definitely demand here as prices go higher this is now seen as an expensive area if prices can't go beyond whatever price that is let's say for example that's eight the price starts to pull back before this happens before this move higher happens prices are between an expensive area and what is known as a bargain area or a cheap area yeah that's just you know fact there was value here buyers bought at this price point buyers weren't willing to push or weren't willing to pay the price whatever the price of this was so then you have what is known as potential pullbacks and until prices actually break this high here and start to go even higher yeah whatever the pullback is whatever price that was when buyers start to buy and there's demand, yeah, even at a previous expensive area, if buyers still continue to buy yeah, and push prices higher, then this becomes a bargain or a cheap area. Proven, it's proven fact. Yeah, There's no disputing about that. Higher highs and higher lows are where the strongest areas of demand and lower highs and lower lows are the strongest areas of supply potentially this was a bargain here so much so that even at a previously expensive area buyers were willing to buy yeah now what we need to understand is that whatever drove prices to new highs from this low if prices come back down here yeah this is where the demand zone strongest area of demand it's not going to be here most traders will be trading at an area of what is known as support and resistance so that would be known as resistance and then when prices come back they would trade here yeah as some sort of level of support but if we're looking at this being the origin of the move higher then this is just what a pullback that's all that is. This is, you know, if you, if you guys know about Fibonacci uh, retracements, you've got 32, 
50, 61.8%, etc. But that's just a discount from this low to this high. So when traders are trading areas of support and resistance, they're not necessarily always trading at the best areas. This is always going to be the, mo the, the, the best price to buy. This was the bargain in the cheap area in the same exact way that this was the bargain or the cheap area if you understand value and what is driving prices. Support and resistance is not the best area to buy. Technically, not to say that the support and resistance doesn't work, of course, support and resistance you know, can be a decent area to buy, but you have to understand what is the best area to buy. And it's always going to be the origin of the move that causes higher highs. Yeah, so higher high, and when that starts to pull back, that's known as what? An expensive area because buyers are no longer willing to buy. Yeah, or pay the price at that price point, whatever that price point is. Yeah, and the origin of that move is where the bargain is. All right, so supply and demand zones, demand zones are potential bargain prices, and when prices come back down to here, this is where we are looking to buy again. This is the best area to buy. Now, again, nobody knows, right? When prices come back down here, we know that this is a potential bargain in the past, but what could have changed here? First of all, there could be a change in fundamental analysis and sentiment. So fundamentals from a Forex perspective are driven by three things. So GDP, inflation, Right, and interest rates. Right, I and T. Sorry, interest rates. But they're also driven by what is known as risk off sentiment. Right, so risk off sentiment. Yeah, and risk off sentiment is described as when we're in an environment of uncertainty or turmoil. Um, uh, or, or, or anything where uh, traders will look to put their money into safe haven assets or safe haven um, currencies like the yen or the Swiss franc. So just because it was a bargain here, let's say for example, if this was, you know, maybe uh, a week ago, yeah, whatever, whatever, you know, date and time that was when prices come back down here what we need to understand is whether this is a bargain again here if the fundamentals haven't changed as to why this was a bargain here then there is a higher probability and a higher likelihood that this will also become you know an area where prices will turn if for example you know there is the, the fundamentals and risk sentiment has changed from when strong demand was produced here then the likelihood that this is going to fail is going to increase that's pretty much what we're doing we're just understanding that when prices come back to a level is this a bargain when we compare gdp inflation and interest rates um the second reason why uh zones fail is going to be because of the search for liquidity. Now, liquidity in its simplest terms is basically the amount of uh, buyers and sellers and buy and sell orders that there are in the market. So for every buy transaction, there has to be sellers, a sell transaction. There has to be someone willing to take the other side of your trade. When you press buy on your broker, there has to the broker is taking the other side of your trade. Now, have you ever had this situation, and I'm sure you have, is when, let's say, for example, there is a news release and the news comes out and everyone can see the number. Let's say, for example, it was non-farm payrolls and the numbers come out way better than expected. So you're, everyone's like, bye, 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 right? So everyone's going to the ups, thinking that price is going to go, go to the upside, but actually prices go to the downside. And everyone's like, huh? Ah, fundamentals don't work. First of all, news trading is not fundamental trading. It's definitely not fundamental trading. Um, and the reason why this happens is because 
there is not enough liquidity to the upside. There is not enough, uh, um, if everyone wants to get long, right? There is not enough sell orders above the market to facilitate the buying. Yeah? And the liquidity, in fact, is what? To the actual downside. So while everyone is getting long, if you buy, yeah, your stop loss is what? A sell order. You are forced to sell when your stop loss gets triggered at a worse price than what you bought for. Bought for. In the same way that when you take profit, your take profit is a sell order, and you are selling at a you bought for, for example, two, and you're selling for four. So your profit is two. Yeah. And on the other side of that trade is your broker who is forced to buy at a worse situation, um, a worse price. Because when you bought a two, they sold it to you for two. Yeah. When you take profit at four, they are forced to buy at four. So they sold it to you and they're forced to buy back at a worse price. So they lose and you win. When you get stopped out, let's say for example, you're forced to, 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 to sell at one, you bought for two, but you're forced to sell at one. They are buying back, taking the opposite side of this trade and they sold it to you at two and they were bought it back at one. That's basically how it works. So if there's not enough buy orders, right? If, sorry, if there's not enough sell orders above the market to facilitate everyone who wants to buy, then the market is going to search for liquidity. And the liquidity and the sell orders are what? Below the market. Your stop losses are the sell orders. The liquidity that the market needs. And money's not tra money's transferred, it's not it's not made, it's transferred from the winner, from the loser, sorry, to the winner. Yeah? So the loser, every time you get stopped out, it goes to the winner. Yeah. That's the way that money is made. It's it's taken, it's not created, it's not made, it's taken in the forex market. So what ends up happening is is that the market needs to search for enough sell orders triggers out all the stop losses before it wants to then go on its way and how many of you guys have seen that happen where you get whipsawed out yeah you get uh the market goes the opposite way when everyone's trying to go long on some great news it stops them all out then everyone's saying okay that's it i'm out triggered and then the amount of sell orders allows the transaction for what buying to occur and then the market can do what it wants because it's got enough liquidity to the downside in order to now uh, transact anyone who wants to buy and who are the smart money buying yeah who are the smart money who are buying who are the liquidity providers the liquidity providers are are the banks so the top 10, right, the top 10 liquidity providers have a market share of around 50 to 60%, right? So these are the guys that provide the liquidity, yeah? These are the guys taking the opposite side of everybody's trade. So everybody, and when I say everybody, I'm talking about, you know, from retail traders and even other financial institutions. These are the guys that are taking the other side of those trades. These are the guys that are providing the liquidity, yeah so it's in their interest it's in their interest for you to lose so what they do is they drive the market to places where they can get the liquidity from you guys and then they can push the market in their direction yeah so jp morgan ubs these are their this is their market share in 2018 2017 i don't think anything has really changed you know 2019 last year but this is the uh, these are the guys you know these are the uh, financial institutions that provide the liquidity yeah and they're not they are not going to be losers 
They're going to be the winners. This is really the reason why stop hunting happens. And some people might say, for example, well, the retail trader only makes up seven, eight percent of the market, which is true. You know, in, in, in we're small fry. But when you think about if the global market, four trillion, right? Four trillion in the Forex market or five trillion, something like that. Now, seven percent or four trillion is somewhere in the region of around three hundred and fifty billion. Right? Three hundred and fifty billion pounds or dollars worth of retail trading orders. And remember, like I said, money is not transferred, it's taken. And if only around about 80% of those traders lose money, that's a lot. 80% of 350 billion, that's a lot of money up for grabs daily. Yeah. So the search for liquidity is what and the reasons why, one of the reasons why levels, you know, tend to not hold. And it's because none of us really know. None of us know for certain when the uh the liquidity providers you know these guys none of us know for sure when they are ready to push the market in the direction that they want to push it nobody knows <clears throat> um you know when the market is going to turn but we just we do have clues that's what we do have there are clues in um how we can actually uh determine um, the best uh, or the likelihood of one thing happening over another at certain zones. Now, not all supply and demand zones are created equally. There are higher probability trades and or higher probability trades that we look at. And uh, those are the supply zones um, and demand zones that we need to identify. Now, if you want to identify those higher probability zones, there's some free training at trading180.com. Uh, one of the things that we need to do first and foremost is understand fundamental analysis and risk sentiment. That is 100%, um, you know, a must if you want to take the highest probability trades because financial institutions are looking at um, uh, look at fun, fundamentals and risk sentiment to make their decisions. They are not looking at a level um, of uh, support and resistance and saying, well, there's a pin bar or an engulfing there and then taking their, taking their, you know, their massive positions based off of technical analysis. They just are not doing that. So why would you alone do that? Technical analysis is just used for our timing and identifying past supply and demand zones and past value. So one of the ways that we definitely will increase the probability of a, um, a successful trade is fresh supply and demand zone. And you'll learn about how to identify the freshest areas of supply and demand zone on the free training at trading180.com and you'll also learn about market manipulations something i term as capture pain relief um location trades as well which is the zero sum game and identifying how to take advantage of losing traders who trade typical um technical analysis breakout traders retracement traders and level traders so go to trading180.com absolutely free training um, and uh, yeah, you'll uh, understand a bit more how to trade um, and identify higher probability levels and zones. So hopefully that's answered your question and uh, just embrace the probabilities, embrace probabilities. That's all we're trying to do as traders, manage our risk, go for at least you know more than we risk, double as an absolute minimum and putting ourselves in the best position to you know, succeed over the long term. So guys, if you have any more questions, just email me at info at trading180.com and take care.